generation stepping up against major corporations trying to uh, spray us, you know, pesticides and, uh, and make us think that model cropping is uh, the future when we know that just like people, yeah, that diversity is what's important. Yeah, diversity is what's important. We came up here with canoe pads to build our houses, build our canoes and feed their people. Before we begin, that's our fourth speaker on the stage. So if we just pause for a moment. That's probably what he would have been saying here. But his band just happened to come up at the same time as we're speaking. So that's Hualalai right now. So let's give him like a moment. Is recognizing that even our enemies are important. And unless we work together, Lava'a, we'll see. So here we go. As a means of introducing ourselves maybe I should just move down here for a moment we're gonna do that chant one more time before we even open and before we introduce who we are and what we're here to speak for this chant is a really beautiful way of at least introducing where we come from if we come from a part of this Mokupuni this island of Hawaii so when we say your district or the area where you live, can you raise your hand and everybody will be looking around. We're gonna slow that chant down. And what that chant is saying, Malana Mai Ka'u Me Puna Me Hilo, is really fitting because it's saying that we as an island, we're just a bigger va'a. And if we don't take care of the va'a that we are sailing on, what will happen when our resources run out. So it's the same idea, but it's just really letting us know and reminding us that we are a double hall as a mokupuni. And it really um, is going to call us all together and say that what pulls us together, what seals us together is our mauna, mauna wakea. So we honor that today, every day, and we are reminded every day of the sacredness. And whatever we do, let us do that in the full joy. Whatever our purpose is, let's forward in the joy of that, of the work, our purpose, what we are here to do. That's the last line. So we're going to do it again. We're going to ask you to raise your hand and we'll know who we are in here. And we'll slow it down just a little bit. Yeah. 
invite you into our world. Our world meaning the world of the chanter and the world of standing. So I'm going to say this time, when you hear that name, because we're going to speed it up a little bit, could you please, if you really love your place, where you come from, where you call home, maybe your birth sand, maybe you've moved here, could you please stand when we announce that in this chant? And everybody, let's stand when we say Mauna Awa Kea, because is that not the truth? that it seals us all together on this moment. So from that point on, we'll be standing and you will be in the world that we are in on a daily basis. The world of chant, the world of sacredness, the world of deep joy for what we do. So here we go. We're going to Kui Luna this time. So I'm going to begin with my introduction and then I think I'm going to switch it over to Kai because I believe that Kai and I have roots here in Kohala. Oh yeah. So I'm going to greet you because this is the birthplace of my father, the birthplace of my grandmother and all of my kupuna with Koko Hawaii from my Hawaiian side comes from this place. All the way from Avini to Niuli'i to Keokea to Kukui and then all the way to Waimea where I'm from, where I was born. So I greet that lineage and I walk softly but firmly at the same time on this ground. And uh, my name is Pua Case and really my way of introduction i'm just going to simply start by saying this i do a lot of panels and if you know me you know i'm standing for mauna wakea but you also know yeah cali yeah are we not but if you really know me you know i've been standing since kaholave standing before that from in the womb before i came out i said i think i'm gonna stand this time so, and, and probably you did too, or else you wouldn't be here. So, what I will say is that I've been traveling around a lot, and I've been on many panels. And if I am truthful about that, I'm going to say that the panels that I usually sit on are all, or mostly, all women. And it's been grandmothers, mothers, and daughters of all nations sitting together and trying to work this out and trying to figure out what we're going to do for the next seven generations on all levels from food to marriage to indigenous resistance to standing and leading what are we going to do so today i'm really quite thrilled to be here and be the only wahine on the panel and really if Kuala Lai were here right now and not on stage there'd be three Connie and just me and that's a really huge thing for me because that means that here in Hawaii we have Connie who know their purpose who know what sacred is and know what communion is and know what connection is and are doing the work through the pule onward to the hana and really sitting in what they have to do that doesn't happen for me very often to be on either side by lanakila who is like a nephew to me 
who's of this younger generation. And Kai, of course, who is of my generation. Strong men who are rising, who know what their purpose is. And I'm just happy to be here today. So I want to hear what they have to say too. Because the next panel I'm going to be on is Wednesday on a radio show for Humboldt County. And it's going to be a women's show again. You know, there's something about us women. We're not going to wait. You know what I mean? We're going to hold a more and we're going to grab you by wherever and we're going to go. Because time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. And we understand that. And we are the earth and the earth is us. And the earth is saying move, move, move. And the water is saying flow, flow, flow. And the mountains are saying climb and I'll catch you. And we are. We are listening. So today is a treat for me to be standing with both of you. So I'm going to pass it down, and I, I'm not even sure what the title of this uh, panel is. So let's check that out first, so we make sure we address it, because you came here to sit down here. So, uh, yeah. Hawaiian culture. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hawaiian culture. All right. Um, we got everything covered. Okay. We got 6,000 years. Okay, but we got a little hour here, and you know, maybe you'll, you can ask us some questions, and you know, we're here for you. So, um, well, here's my notes for every other panel we've had, and then here's my notes for your panel. Oh, try to show them that. Show them that. There's our notes. You know. I thought, I'll just sit down and shut up. You know why? At this stage, I don't think anybody's going to really tell us what to do, and we're not compromising, and we're just like full on. But uh, so I guess that's why that note page is blank. Right. Give, give it clean. Give it clean. So um, all three of us, I guess, what joins us together so many things. But Mauna Kea does come to mind. So most recent most current as far as if you would call it a situation we call it a privilege is Mauna Wake and we are standing yes indeed I'm one of six petitioners in a court case and if anybody tells you that poor cases against science and astronomy don't believe them I'm just can't see a 18 story building of any kind on my Mauna at this point and I'm not willing after 13 already up there, I'm not willing to say, yes, you can this time. So just know that that's what it is. 18 stories of anything on our Mauna is gonna change things. And so I, this time my Ohana, we just have to stand for the Mauna. So that's why I guess I'm here today, but I'm really here for whatever purpose I can serve. And I'm going to hand it off to Kai, and Kai can do an introduction, and then Lanakila, and and then we'll, we'll go for it. <laughs> Hello, I, I, what's going on? My name is Kai Kelike Hali Okahola Kai. I, I, I moved to North Kohala uh, 1973, so. Being here, even though I know my ancestors come from this area, I had to constantly prove myself to the Aina. And yeah, so what I did, uh, first thing I do is ask permission, uh, can I open up your land, can I farm? Because uh, to today I don't own any land. I have a little homestead lot that just a lease agreement for 99 years and will continue. And then, uh, so I just asked permission and so I can show it like a, my father to me. So ever uh, is this land, open them up. And so even like that in Erica, you know, they was looking for stuff that said, I, I work here, I farm here, I can help you. You need wooly, I can help. Yeah. Uh, and I, see, I know my purpose why I'm here. I'm here to be medicine for the people. And, and nothing to do with nationality. We're all human beings with different tones and vibration. And Paul was right. See, us, our, yeah, the masculinity is an idea. See, my job as a, as a male is to help her unfold, help her to see all her beauty, to see all her, her gift. So the male energy is the idea. The female energy is creation. So even within ourselves, as male and female, we have to be 
tunnel with the idea and with creation. And so we've got to get this idea and we have to manifest it into creation. And so it's very important. I'm talking concepts, universal concepts. So just like the word aloha. Think of it. A-L-O, in the presence of Creator, we share the breath of life. It's not saying, well, only the Hawaiian can share the breath of life. No, no, no. Till today, I'm telling you, even though we, you, you think we're 50 states, we're still the kingdom of Hawaii. We're descendants, we're heirs. We still have our own land. We can prove it. And we have every right as, as U.S. citizens and as Hawaiian kingdom citizens till today. And I tell you, this, this Aina has a name, has a, has a legend and story. And so the land has already been planted. All we have to do is replant what was once was. Koala was the breadbasket that fed everybody. They had the food, so we can still do it. That easy. We live on an island. We have to see. See, in greater consciousness, you got to realize it. You know, even like Americans, like an Hawaiian, there's no such thing like that because we come from different ancient ancestors. We all tie in. But you see, if we come from unconditional love, always see love, beauty, and harmony. And that's what I see. I don't see like, wow, I have cousins where like 20 nationalities. What are you going to do? Well, you know, the German, the English. Uh, the, I'm, we're Scots, half of white male, but not only the Hawaiians. We're Scots, the Lindsay, the birds, the bells. And you know, even the Romans, they don't mess up with the Scots. <laughs> See, in my vision, Scotland already had the independence. In my vision, my parallel, they're already independent. I just have to connect with that parallel and be independent too. It's that easy. We have every right, you know, as American citizens and as U.S. Kingdom citizens to the right. And then so we have that, that opportunity. What I do now is Hawaiian medicine. Food and medicine, no difference. See, when you talk about disease and you're trying to get to the core of everything because you gotta live to survive, you gotta live to function. So nothing happened in a ma physical manifestation without spirit. If you have no spirit, you're dead. It's called physical death. So you need spirit. And spirit, if it's not porno, meaning mentally thinking correctly and emotionally feeling correctly, you gotta have that balance. And then that was manifest in the physical. So no physical disease occur unless you got imbalanced spirit. So when you get whole on porno, you make it right. That's a start. So 90% is spirit. When you talk about disease, uh, eventually you can talk to me later on about Hawaiian medicine and, and relationship. But I'm just trying to tell you, I'm still alive and I'm still around. I have 147 first cousins so I can talk with a lot of family. You know, so I learned. You know, grandma, grandma taught me stay away from the pharmaceutical so you can stay alive. So I'm, I'm going to be 65, 66 years old in, in my January. So I tell you, it works. Hawaiian food, Hawaiian medicine works. You just got to eat it. Make it part of you. You're here in Hawaii, why not? If you're here in Portugal, eat with the Portuguese. Eat. You know? If you're in Spain, eat with the, in France, eat with the eat. You got to what's here, what's available. It can help you. It can inspire you. See, the, all of the stuff you're thinking is, well, we're here by ourselves. No, we have living entities. People are here, ancestral people are here. They're like, how can I help you? Uh, you crossed the line, sorry, you shouldn't go there. They, they, they talk about Kiaviele, light up, oh, there's a shark there. Well, guess what? The shark has territorial. You gotta talk stories. You know, you gotta start communicating. You think, it, you, you think you're in charge? Pele telling you you're not in charge. <laughs> The surf telling you you're not going to live on an island. No. So you got to realize it, you know, that there's more to it than this. So you're not a continent. So you cannot just deforest. You cannot do things. Everything's already aligned. It's, fi it's finding a place of what was and make it porno and make it right. It's already, they already got the low ease to get. Now we got to do it open. Continue as one was. We got tons of water. See? For real, we get the best clean air, we get the best water. We got so much water here, we just, you dig it right now, you hit water. So you, what's your excuse? Good soil, good air, water. Oh, you're lazy. Now we got it. Every 
everybody want to do, oh, you know, go buy this, go buy that. Why? I grew up gathering. It's a way of life. Ask permission, gather only what you need, and we plant. So what I do, Johnny Appleseed, go out in the forest, plant, plant, plant. I don't care what, who's land it is. They don't own it. The wave cup, take them away. So you gotta keep planting. And I believe you keep planting. We're still alive. We plant trees, we can breathe oxygen. So, you know, it, you know, even if you think you're old, you're still not in charge. This is a small, this is an island. If it sinks, long way to swim. So you got a little aina. And I don't care what your nationality, you come here, these are the guidelines. The ancestors already had the guidelines. These are the rules. The kingdom has the constitution. These are the rules. Like U.S. Constitution. These are the rules. You cross the line, consequences. It's like go to prison, you get the consequences. You like South Boston? Same like Hawaii medicine. If you want to get well, you gotta trust. You gotta, you gotta hope on the phone. You gotta make it right. I can talk. I'm still alive, and I'm around. You know. But I'm telling you like it is, so, and it's, and it's not too much a spoken word, it's a vibration in gold. You got to get really, get clear and solid, what's your assignment? Why are you here? Otherwise, you're going to be dying again, born again, you're going to see your diapers. What's your problem? You never get it right the first time. And I'm telling you now, some of you folks been here before, you're some of our ancestors here, and now you're coming back, and you're trying to make it right. And making it right is following the same rules that you followed before. And if you make it right, you'll be Pono. Because we embrace all nationalities. But these are the rules, so to make it work. So Mono Waikea, it's, 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 it's important because they are living entities. People are thinking these things are they're living entities. The message is in the music. So these entities are right. See, they're reaching in the country, the moon. We're always one. We're always connected. But all we see we is separation. We, we gotta see in our yes, uniqueness, not our differences. Right. How we get to the center of the circle, 360 degrees. This is A way, not B way. You know why this is A way of doing it. But if you cross the line, I'm sorry, you get to the center. Brian's long so, sound man right here from Little talk over there if you guys want to continue. But Kubo. Brethren's been doing concerts. Joshua and Akilo, I like to My name is Joshua and Akilo, I like to I want to, first off, uh, yes, mahalo anu ino kia kamo ku kohala mahalo kohala mahalo ena poe e hui ku anda ni kia and thank the people who organized this wonderful gathering. Um, so I was driving up here. I was wondering what I'm gonna say. Hawaiian culture. <laughs> it's a big thing. Um, so just to share. Um, my experience. Um, I am a quarter Kanaka Maori, a quarter Hawaiian. My father is Stephen Manguel from Kona, Hawaiian Filipino. My mother is Marine Louise McGraw from Colorado. He's Irish Scottish. <laughs> um, growing up, I was um, born, uh, raised with my mom. My dad wasn't there. The Kanaka, the Hawaiian. But mom understood the value of understanding the culture of the place. Not to mention that her child is of this, or the koko is of this place. So she was sure to get me to the kumu, to the sources, to resources to learn my culture. So a lot of what I learned wasn't through my ohana. It actually was learned from the kumu and other ohana that has now been instilled to me to take back to my ohana and remind my ohana. Um, you can go research Hawaiian history. It's really interesting. You can see what's happened um, politically and all this kind of stuff to our people and to this land. Um, I myself, um, I'm a graduate of Kano Ka'aina, Hawaiian Charter School um, in Waimea. Um, I'm born and raised in Honoka'a town. 
In fact, if you go to a college there, in her, I was born in one of those rooms. It's kind of funny sometimes to be teaching. It's like, I was, what are you doing there? You're teaching. It's like, I might have popped out over here. I don't know. <laughs> but um, born and raised there, um, Kanookaina instilled something very important to me. And that's the, a matter of kuleana. And kuleana, responsibility over my own wants and desires. Kuleana first. And finding value and life and happiness in my responsibility. Very counter to this, to what we're being taught nowadays. So go, go follow what you want to do. What do you want to do? What do you, what do you, 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 you? Go do what you want to do. What do I want to do? What I want to do? I want, I, 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 I. Very selfish. It's better the, a different uh, perspective of look first. What does your community need? What does your ohana need? What does your aina need? In your own skills that you were born with, we all have the we can, innate gifts. Yeah? We are only here, we're products of all of our kupuna, our ancestors before. And you're born into this world already with that, that knowledge and the gifts, the natural gift, the child that just loves to you know, build stuff, the child that loves to run. Or, you know, we see that. Our kupuna used to actually watch Ora Kamali, they watch the kids and they see what kind of skills they're kind of showing for and then they encourage them into that style of life. So the kids are always building stuff. Ooh, they hang out with the carpenter uncles over there. Don't hold a fuck of fishing and down in the ocean. Maybe push him, guide him in that direction. Not forced into a box. Um, where was I going with that? I do that a lot. Um, <clears throat> however, Kuleana, thank you. So, it's a different model to look at. But really pursuing your heart's desire and how you can help your people. How you can help your aina. How can you help your land? And finding joy in that. Another thing that was instilled in me growing up. Malama, take care of the land that feeds you. The place that you were born, what we call in Hawaiian, your oneha now. You can never detach from that. You should never detach from that. Your history as you grew up in area, even if their times were hard, the upbringing might have been hard, the history was hard, you still have a pilina, a connection to that place. And it's a matter of looking even at hardships, at the good things and the bad things, and learn from that. Can it feed you? Can it guide you in what you in what in your endeavors that you're pursuing now? Connection. You hear this word, you probably hear this word a lot in Hawaii, pico. Okay? In general, you heard the term, you know, your belly button is your pico. Okay, test, test, Hawaiian stuff. How many pico you get? Like a kolo. We were trying, or taught, three pico. Your pico maluna. The, top, the crown of, you know the soft spot when you was baby? That's your pico maluna. This is the pico, the umbilical that connects you to your kupuna, to your ancestors, to your akua, your spiritual connections. It comes to us here, to this pico maluna. It's stored here in the na'au, in the gut. Yeah? And this pico, the umbilical here, at one time physically connected you to your mother. Whatever the mother imbibed or ate or breathed, they went directly into you. And then the pico malalo is your ma'i, or your genitalia. And that all has to do with the future. The future generation will come from there. So we're always taught, no matter what you do, whatever your endeavor is, you got to check your pico. Does it honor your kupona? Is it going to be able to work right here and now? And will that be my kai and pono for the future generations to come? If it doesn't line up with one of those, it's not pono. Not abandon it. Figure it out. Make it work. The practice that we have here in Hawaii you might have heard of was the uh, the planting of the pico, the umbilical, the part that falls off the baby. Yeah? A lot of times that for different ohanas have different traditions, but it's always put onto the aina someplace. And wherever it's buried, you are solidifying a pilina, a spiritual connection to that aina, to that place. And for many Hawaiian people, especially in the Hamakua, Kohala districts, one of those picos was actually buried, uh, buried um, up on the mount, on the mount, Mount Awakia. Because yeah? wherever that pico is buried to, you can feed off of that. You can connect to it wherever it is. I asked my mom, Mom, where's my pico? She goes, I lost it. 
<laughs> it's in the ground someplace. Whether a doctor took it or whatever, but it's someplace. But I know my one now, the place that I was born, Honoka'a, I will always have a connection to that place. And therefore I have a responsibility to that place. We live in a much different time and era here in which we gallivant all over the world. I want to quote one of our kupuna. We live in a time in which we are eating from the buffet of the world, but neglecting the plate of our ohana. As I was always taught, it's my kai, learn. Venture out, learn as much as you can. But what are you learning for? To bring back home. To help your own, to help your ohana, to take care of your place. A lot of our ancestors went, you know, hundreds of generations without leaving their place. That's how they became, as, uh, the term I want to share with you is kahuna, a master. Yeah? Understanding every little idea of how their place and how their aina operated, how everything moved. Yeah? Because they focus on their place, they take good care of their place. So in this day and age where we holo holo so much, going all over the place, sometimes we get too much in here. And we get so in the head, we float away. We awana. Awana means to wander. We're wandering off. And we are not malaming the, 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 the basics again. The foundations. Our foundations are, oh, hamajang. So old for the old, old time. Or, oh, hamajang. You ever heard of hamajang? Yeah. It's not, it's not pa'a anymore. So now we're in another age, and this is where, in my consciousness in this day and time, we're in a time of reawakening and reconnecting to Aina, to place. Why? Because our ancestors, our kupuna, and our, our parents, our grandparents, they got unhooked. We are now living with the decisions of our parents, of our grandparents. So we need to face these things. We need to rethink these things. And one of the best models to follow, and why I dedicate my life to carrying on the traditions of my kupuna, is because in this aina, that was a prescription that was made for this place and was tested and trialed for over 2,000 years. I think it works opposed to always bringing in something brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new. And notice it does, uh, does it work, does it work, does it work, does it work, does it work. A lot of what we need to make our future better lies in our past. For all of our kupuna, all over the world, at one time lived in complete harmony with their place. We were able to live here on these islands for over 2,000 years and we did not wipe out our resources. In the very short time that there's been an introduction of so many other ways, in little over a hundred years, we've almost lost everything. So for many of you guys who have uh, moved here to Hawaii, you're like, oh, it's beautiful. But even look, looking around, you know that more than over 95% of everything you're looking at is not of this aina, is not of this place, invasive species. You drive, you see the beautiful, beautiful mountain and all the beautiful pastures in Waimea side. 150 years ago, that was forest. So what do we do? The time of recognizing has already, we're here, we're recognizing things. Now is the next step of we have to activate. We have to do something about these things. Take the knowledge of our kupuna, of our history. If we are living in this gifted age of information, well, my God, let's use it properly. And part of that is take your your desires and your wants, put that on a side or connect it to the need. And if we're not doing it for us, we gotta think seven generations. With every act you do, will it affect positively or negatively for the next seven generations? Live on and progress righteously. Mahalo. That's this generation talking. So my daughter Havani has a 
a saying for me, if you will, a directive for me. She's about the same age as Lanakila, and she's in Canada right now. And she's speaking up for the Mauna in Canada because Canada is one of the funders from Mauna Kea. And I said, uh, will you go, because I'm going to be here, will you go to Canada and speak for the mountain? And she, she said, I will, Mom. I will. So she always tells me, and so I'm going to say something to those like my age, 50-something or older. This is what my daughter says to me. She says, Ma, don't you leave that shit for me. <laughs> you ever get a child that actually says that? Mine do. Don't you leave that for me to clean up. This is happening on your watch. Do something about it. You get kids like that, those of you in the 50-somethings. I do. I have two beautiful daughters much more brave than I could ever be who said mom you gotta stand even when you stand alone you have to be brave mom you are not grandma and papa because grandma and papa have inherited the fear of that generation they inherited the fear of what about the jobs what about your safety what about when you step forward? What are they going to say about you at work? That's my parents. Because they inherited that. And I made a promise that my children would not inherit that. But consequently, I was in that middle generation that also inherited a lot of fear. Those of you in your 50s over here, didn't you inherit fear? I can tell you living on this Mokupuni, we did. Living as Kanaka here, Koko Hawaii. Yes, we did. And so to undo that fear and to step up to what your children are directing you to do, sometimes it's not easy. So those of you who are kind of working through your fear right now and deciding what you're going to stand for and how you're going to lead the rest of your life, Work through it, and don't take too long. And if you need any help, I can sick my two daughters on you, because believe me, they'll get you going. So speaking of a couple things, I'm gonna echo, and then I'm gonna turn it back over, but we are all in that tent, so if we run out of time, we're just here to kind of introduce ourselves. I'd love to talk to you guys about all the shawls that everybody is wearing for sacred strength. Or Lanakila has other things he can share, and Kai certainly has all his la'au down there that he'd love to share too. But you want to work through that fear and you want to get to what you're really meant to do because I wouldn't trade a second of this journey in the past five years that has led us on this trail. And if there's a good lawyer out here that can help us move along this injunction, please come see me later because uh, we could, we could use some help. But I'm going to ask you, speaking of the Mauna, I'm sure a lot of you saw perhaps on Facebook our footage, and you know that there was a groundbreaking proposed on October 7th, and you know that that didn't happen. And I, yeah, you can clap now. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that because However that came to be, we don't have a blueprint right now. We have kupuna guidance, if we're really listening, ancestral guidance. But we don't have a blueprint for these young ones on how to really do something because we haven't really stepped forward in quite a few years, you know, since Kaho'olawe, since some of the, uh, me too, was my first real, you know, getting involved. We haven't really done anything here. We're just stepping forward. If you've marched in a GMO march, you know we're just getting back into it. So there's no real blueprint. So I'm gonna ask you, don't judge us. We're doing what we have to do and we're finding our way to do it. And October 7th was key for all of you too. 
It was key for food sustainability. It was key for anti-GMO movements. It was key for the Mauna, from the mountain to the sea, it was key because you know what, it created a shift. It says we are going to be braver. We are not compromising because our beloved Hawaii is hanging in the balance and our very spirit and soul and connection to our ancestors is essential and vital to all of you and to us. So we did stand. So I'm going to say that Lanakila and I were there. So I'm going to ask Lanakila to stand because Lanakila was there. And my daughter Havani was there, so I'm just going to put her name out there. But I'm also going to say, Hualalai was there, and he's here, so he's going to stand too. But because we're braver, stronger, I'm going to say if you were there, from Pohakuloa all the way to the top of the mound, if you were there and you would like to stand, I'll invite you to stand. And please remain standing. Yeah, you never know, yeah, sometimes. Who in your midst? And then I'm going to say. My kako, my name is Walalai Keaviluna Keohuloa. I was born on the island of Molokai, raised on Mokuo Keave, Hawaii Ne, aka. Big Island. Yeah, we all know the Big Island. I was raised by my Voyaging Canoe family. Um, I don't know if you folks are familiar with Voyaging Canoes, but it's how we inhabited the most isolated landmass in the biggest ocean on Earth at a time that most people couldn't swim and or thought the world was flat. Yep. And on top of these canoes, we brought canoe plants to build our houses, build our canoes, and feed their people. Yep. Keep anthropologists up for the rest of their life. They thought the sweet potato and the chicken was hard to wrap their minds around. But when they found these plants that came from all around the world, yeah, it, it's going to shove our paradigm as what we think today into the future. Because what I find myself when I'm practicing on these va'as, and you start to realize that these plants came from all, all around the world, we'd be fools to believe in the left brain conditioning, yeah, Western thinking, to believe that one race made it up here before everybody else did. That's not our story. The reason why we were successful voyagers was not because we packed our boats full of men privately contracted by the queen in the name of doctrine of discovery. That's not why we were successful sailors. To keep in mind, they all came way after the fact, yeah? We were successful because grandpa and grandma, all the way down to the babies, was in that va. Ah. Guys like me, we only good fight gravity. At 35, that's all we good for. What does that mean? Put me on a paddle, the end, yeah? That's it. So you gotta be careful of me, yeah? We get grounded by the people we learn from. But in the end, we only fight gravity. But us guys, you fight gravity in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., jellyfish, bang. That's where we win, right? But grandpa, 80 years old, master navigator, yeah? 40 year moon cycle. How am I supposed to know that? I'm not even 40 yet. But grandpa cannot walk. But this guy know if we're going the whole planet. Not only that, but auntie, she birthed babies. She don't know how to swim for crap. But how are we going to have new navigators without the midwife? You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm starting to understand is that the success of an island is still the same today. Yeah, realizing that everybody here, all living things, yeah, we have to emphasize that because when we say all live, we think only humans, yeah? But everybody's important. So... What I've been kind of discovering right now, I work at Pu'ukohola, historical national site. And you get one situation where you get chiefdom, monarchy, nationhood, bang. Flushing toilets, telephone, electricity for the White House. What does that mean? Yeah, what does it all mean? So we're a football nation, yeah? Football nation. We play war for fun. Yeah. Most people that cross this ocean was taught left brain conditioning. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. Right? Right? To us, we compared everything we did in the ocean to making babies. I don't know if you see my beautiful wife, but I get four kids. Yeah. So there's a lot of 
a lot of answers for all humanity. Kamehameha knew something. I don't know if he knew knew himself, but he's obviously being steered, yeah? He knew that, hey, football not gonna work. These guys can come. Their football, they're running with their tails between the legs from religion, economy, all kinds of things, yeah? Us, we came out here for what? Anthropologists only find fish hooks and rock walls. That's it. All over the world, Catalina, Arctic, you name it. They cannot figure them out. Like, how come? Only fish hooks, only rock walls. Why there's no infrastructure? Yeah, pool kohala. What about this one? Yeah, but that was after the fact of contact. So what's going on here? Hey, today, kind of sad, monofilament, yeah? But same thing. Who leaving that damn monofilament behind? Us surfers and us fishermen. We think the thing came from the, the branch, so the thing biodegradable. Point is, they surf us. It's a nation of surfers. Catamaran, trimaran, fastest hall design known to mankind today. Even our own people struggle to figure out why. Because they talk. But it's because surf was so point is, yeah, surf was do what? Yeah, Tutu Pele blowing up, hurricanes blowing up, tsunamis blowing up, everybody freaking out. What the surfers doing? <laughs> Lashing their boards on the car doing hell, girl, force winds, lying to the cops, lying to the coast guard trying to get in that ocean for they don't even know why, I know because I one of those guys. You know, we get hospitalized how many times till we figure them out that oh yeah, physical reality is a real thing. Yeah. But try think about the leadership now. Try think about why they were in charge across this thing. It wasn't out of fear. It's out of fun. How come we things out of fun anymore? Why everything gotta be so serious? Cause you know, when I have babies, I have a good time. I really do. So if I building economy, if we had a nation building economy, yeah? You know, three story house, I see them keep going up on the beaches. You know how long it takes for clean on house? You know how less time you're going to have making babies and surfing? You, you kind of see the, you see it's right in our face, yeah? Contract, legal this, legal... They think they own the road on the other side of the island that just got ran over by lava. So real quickly you're going to see that the... It's, it's all here, it's all here. But try to look at the culture, try to look at the timeline. Kaolave, right? Hokulea, same time. Same time. Then you get Makali comes into the picture. You get Mauloa, you get Nakalai Va'a, Kano Kaina. And this really is like, I gotta step back because I'm a product of these people. They created that situation. Yeah. They said there's no template, but they charged. Yeah. And they see us charging, so they hold us back. But anyway, you get Kano Kaina. Yeah. And now you get this worldwide voice thing, these charter schools and all this stuff just going off. But really, it came out of a renaissance. Like Auntie said, my grandfather, guys, was born in a time you couldn't carry on Hawaiian name. Yeah. Glenn, Clayton, Milton, Carl, Linda, Berlman. Yeah. My generation. Yeah, you got a deep Jim Carrey. Kuala like you have you going to but anyway, I don't like to take up too much time. I'm just, just trying to share, like, you know, I, where I kind of come from. Me, I, I kind of more on, like, the rebel side, whatever. I've been trying to do a lot of it. I love anti. I've been going through some crazy things right now because we're in so much struggles. I work for the Department of Interior, giving free canoe rides to the open public. It's great in the canoe, but when I get up in that office next to a war hail, I have to use everything inside of me to tell me that that was power ready. Yeah, so I'm a whole auntie. When she says, man, if it wasn't for the few of those women, yeah, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah, we wouldn't. Because you know what is inside of my head? Hydraulic hoses. Yeah, you get a handful of screws and you dump it in where you put the oil is. They're gonna have to drag those machines off the mountain. But no, no. Queen Lilio Kalani said no. She said no. No way. How's this? They're gonna try to take something away from us, but it's ours for sure. It's a way of thinking, yeah? Most people sail to an island. That's like running after cheetah, just say, uh, swimming after a fish. But try put yourself in the ocean. Stay absolutely still. Align yourself with the landmass you want to experience and wait till it comes to you. Yeah. 
So all I gotta say is, what I've been learning through this culture is human culture. Bruce Lee, when the Californians came up to him and they said, is it cause you're Asian you fight so well? He's like, no. Unless men get three arms and four legs, we all capable of doing the same thing. So I've been learning in my self-discovery. Yeah, it's not important who did what first. That's out. You can shoot yourself in your own foot. Bang. What's important is that we're all capable of doing what each other doing. Yeah, anyway, with that being said, thank you. I love these rebels. I'm getting the signal that we are done. So, but but we're going just to move down. So we're, we'll see you down at the next place and. Um, the, right next to the eating place and uh, just in closing we just want to say that we wouldn't change anything we are loving every part of every issue because we are going over them through them under them around them in them and we are coming out so much more evolved than we would have been and this is like a great time to be alive, to make correction, to transform, to vibrate at our highest vibration. And I know we all agree with that. And so we're just going to close this part. And um, actually, I'm going to, what's next? Um, I'll, no, I'll close it. Oh, no, don't, no, we, nothing? We were going to do young, young farmers, but behind, so Okay. Gas. We're going to call off. And you are going to head out on your way, and uh, we're going to chant you out of here. Okay, is that good? We'll chant you out of here. And I'm going to um, choose to chant you out of here with a poem that my grand auntie wrote here in Kohala. Her name was Sally Berg, and she wrote a poem called The Hawaiian. And uh, really, what it says in the end is no matter what has happened to us at any time period, at any time, and that goes for anything that's ever happened to your people as well, we will forward and we will live on and we will be bigger and better than we were before because our ancestors are here. They're right here every second and guiding us and we will live on. So we're going to do that for you. And you are free to leave, to stand, to close your eyes. But this is our departure from you right now. Okay, so we are closing. This is it. But we want to sing you out of here. Because if we were on the Mauna right now, we'd be singing you off that top of the mountain. Because that's what we do.
courage, your evolution, your inclusion, your amazing aloha, your strength and perseverance is food for all of us. And we stand with you, next to you, and behind you, always. You may